So I went looking for what I hoped was a sign of a uh, piece of tin. Uh, no, that was like impossible to find. But I did find a zinc, zinc plated metal. So we're going to use that uh, similar to a, a tin. So my name is Edwina, Edwina Shannon. I am a master gardener here. Uh, happy to say that. And uh, this program are offered in the Farmers Market and Master Garden programs. Am I your wife? Really? <laughs> you can sit up here. and turn up the wall, Patty. That's what I do. <laughs> so I've been uh, lettering since I was in college, which is when I, when I do the math, I think it is done wrong. It is so long ago now. I have to do it manually to just to make sure they did it right on the calculator. But, um, <laughs> and that and unto itself, it's, but um, I have enjoyed lettering. And I studied in college, which was in Boston. And the professor I had there, it was a, a unique interest at that time. Uh, the renaissance of lettering actually goes back to about the 1900s, 1920s in England. So all of my basis in, in where I learned to letter comes from that time with Edward Johnston. And uh, he was saving the medieval manuscripts at that time. A lot of them were being made into lampshades and just cut up for beautiful little pictures. So his purpose was to introduce uh, people to the fact that they are art and they need to be uh, saved. So he wrote a book and uh, a lot of our uh, print today is based upon what he considered the correct proportions that he studied. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting point that he compiled from and was the basis of, if that makes sense going forward. So when I do um, garden science, when I do lettering, um, I like to have it light. I like to have it fun. I like to have it more on the creative side. However, my basis is very mathematical and very regulated. So you're going to get a quick overview here on, um, on just when you pick up a, a brush or you pick up a pen, what the different things that you're going to be deciding. We have here a, just a, a quick piece of paper that will show you the, the angles of how you hold things. So you have a, a letter angle, you have uh, the, the pen angle, and then you, you actually have the other different things down here like embellishments and proportions and the fonts. All of those go into the, the letter that you choose. We have, that is like a basic tool and uh, I have found calling myself a lettering artist doesn't make me seem as outdated. But I still have a calligraphy sheet that shows you the different lettering arts at the bottom. So I'm going to give you that as well. And if you want my contact info, I'm fine in giving you that too. So to start this class, one of the tools that I like, especially for demos and for work, are Sharpies. Sharpies are phenomenal. They come with a chisel edge. They're, they don't bleed. And uh, they come in multicolors now. So up here, just for to give you a quick demo of that sheet, the white sheet that I passed out, when you hold a brush or you hold a pen at a zero degree angle, that means on your horizontal line, you have absolutely no difference between the top of the line here and uh, the horizontal. There's a, a zero degree difference. See, it's, it's straight, it's parallel to it. You hold the pen the exact opposite way and you end up with a thin line. That would be a 90 degree angle for the pen. Um, most of us will do our lettering at a 45 degree angle. We use flat brushes, or you can use a chisel brush like this is chiseled. You use a flat brush and when you hold it, it goes at a 45 degree angle. That, keeping that consistent is a challenge. Because if you rotate that, the letter will start um, bad at the top and it'll come down and be skinny at the bottom. So it's, it's not necessarily wrist writing, it's arm writing. So a 45 degree angle is going to have a stroke down like this. Now to check it, if you look, there's a snowflake on there. And if you do a snowflake at a 45 degree angle, you're going to find 
the thinnest one is going to be this one, the fattest one is going to be this one. That's a 45 degree snowflake that you do on with check during the wet. Now you throw to that, do you want your letters to be straight up? So you have your letter angles, the head angles which make those the letters, but then you also have the letter angles. Do you want the letters to be straight like Roman, the way we learned to print, or do you want them to be at an angle like our cursive? So uh, that is called italic. So you have different degrees of the letter angle. Typical italic is at uh, anywhere the seven to a 30 degree. 30 is a very, very casual italic. A good italic is going to be probably at about 15 to 20, which we can e easily read in our eyes. Now when I do lettering on the signs, I decide, as, as you think for a minute, think about the ads, uh, because the ads are filled with typefaces. Typefaces are going to present a message just by their mere presence. Uh, if you have a very, very thin typeface, we'll say like a Neiman Marcus ad, they're known for very thin typefaces. We get a different impression just in looking at that ad. Let's think about, let's go with a Dollar General ad. Completely different image, right? So when you choose your lettering, you're going to have an image that comes across just from the letter style that you choose. This one is done in a black letter form. Um, goes back to the Middle Ages. You often will find it on, on um, certificates, recognitions. Uh, it's very angular. In that time frame, it was done very tight to save space. This, I loved the knots. So my purpose was to come up with a word that I could integrate those knots into the word. <laughs> I know it was a weird, it was a weird purpose, but it's just like I, I just thought, I just liked them. So um, you notice two different typefaces here, and uh, the and the uh, the process on this unfinished wood on the back, and flip it over here, and it's varnished, and then it is painted in black, and then it is varnished again. Um, this is nothing more than creative. It was just done for fun. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I wanted to see the, the purple and the orange and the yellow, the juxtaposition of those colors. That was more my purpose in this than anything else. It just, uh, I wanted it to be light. I'm not done with that. We're going to put more splash on it, probably more gold and more glitter and woo, just something for funness. So today, as you came in, I ask you to uh, check off a phrase that you liked. Do we have a, a count on uh, who liked what? Not who. Do you want to send them around? Because only three people were right. Oh, yeah, sure. If they could just check off what they want. Um, this is not done, so we can work on this while we're, while we're uh, prepping this up. Up here, uh, Patty, you had mentioned the metal. So I'm going to grab a piece of metal here, just so we could have. This comes with some type of a finish on here. So I brought steel wool to uh, take the finish off. Anytime you sand or you uh, steel wool something, you also have to go ahead and uh, remove the little pieces that are left with a, uh, a lacquer remover type of thing to collect all of the stuff that we can't really see. So we want to rough it up a little bit. So this is the prep work part. Did you get that? I sure did. It was five dollars. Okay, yeah, um, I think it was aisle twenty-two. I had to ask for it, <laughs> um, and it was on the bottom. Of a, it went down. Uh, it was on the left-hand side at the bottom. It was hard to find. Okay. Yeah. And I had tried the new hardware stores first, thinking that they would have something quirky like this, and they all sent me over to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. I try. I'm sorry. Where did you want us to do this? Just which one do you want me to do today? Put a mark on whichever one you like. Oh, just oh, I see. Yeah, just vote on it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I spent uh, last night on the internet finding 
just ideas for things to do today. These other things just kind of popped out of the head. Well, I need the weeders welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weeders welcome. And if you find old metal tin pieces like what you said, do you have to prep that too, or do you just well, wash over the paint? Well, everybody. You, at the degree mm -hmm. of deterioration it is, we want to prevent continued deterioration. Yeah, so um, you probably want to seal it. Oh, okay. And um, you want to take a look at how much rust there is <coughs> and then determine play with it. All right, so I brought in here a lot of remover. Should you seal the back of your welcome friend sign as well? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, it depends upon where you're going to put it. Often I will, um, I will have. Uh, hooks that they hang from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get bolted right into a, a wall. Mm -hmm. So it very much de depends upon what you're going to do. It will do a hip on too. It's important. Which it is. <coughs> now to this, um, I brought in spray paint. And I, I don't think I'm going to do it, but I did bring in spray paint. I might take it outside real quick and be able to out there because it is pretty small. Um, Crystalline is, I should buy stock, um, and Krylon. These, these are, this was I brought in particularly for this today. I thought my thought process, and we always change, it's art. There's never anything wrong. You just make an alteration. Keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. Wasn't what you planned. It's what happened. All right. So we're going to. Uh, uh, the idea was to give it a little bit of spray around here. So it wasn't really going to have that metal look. It was going to have like a little float around it. I may take it out. I won't subject you to the smell. But that's prepped and ready for that. The wood here. There were a couple of thought processes on this, and then I said, you know what? We'll just do one phrase. But I got this wood, and I thought, if you cut this in half, drilled a couple of holes in each part with dowels, you can make a, a two-piece sign, you know, blue and wood. You can hang it with a chain. Uh, you can screw it into something. So this has to be primed uh, as far as get off, whatever, the mark, the fingerprints, all of that that's left from um, being in the store for as long as it is. And I thought we would use today, instead of a spray paint on this, I would use acrylic. Acrylic and uh, latex, they're the same thing. Uh, oil paints, there's also milk paint, there's a lot. Whatever you want to do, the oil paints would last longer outside without a finish, just like if you paint your house. Anything that you do with wood would be applicable to a wood sign here. So we're going to just take a a generic acrylic color and buff the thing out. Uh, so we give it like a base. And then we'll see what you want to do. Do you use pressure treated wood for outdoors or just? I just use regular wood. Could you use pressure treated wood? Yeah. Um, it leaches. Doesn't. Um, you want to be able to seal it. Definitely would use oil paint on it. That's what I would do. Sienna is a nice color. So I've got a burnt sienna here. So this will dry and we'll be able to do something on it. You could use stain on this. Anything that we're doing here for a garden sign can be done in, a, in the house as well. Uh, just anything that goes outside, you either have to prepare it further um, with, with sealant or, and finish it afterwards more with sealant. If you notice, there's a cryon up here. It's a beautiful thing. It's, a, it's like a polyurethane that you don't have to brush on, you spray it on. So that's an easy sealant to go outside. And now that it's going to weather, eventually it will end up uh, Changing color, kind of like cedar, it will change color. Might be a beautiful red, but you'll end up with all types of uh, deterioration with the letters and the wood, and that's part of the charm of it being outside. 
So the heavier and, and uh, acrylic comes off with uh, water. Don't uh, leave your brushes with it on because it will, it's a polymer, so it will definitely make your brushes as hard as possible. So you go with the grain of the wood. Oh, and this is one that I, I hope uh, someone wins today, so this is the one we're going to do. If we have a long enough quote. And I will clean this table up afterwards, so. <laughs> And you just wash it off with water, it's not a big deal. While this is drying, we'll add to our place. Now, that was just done in a pretty blue. It would be ideal if uh, the person has blue as a color in their location. It would be the roof, the house, the shutters, whatever. We'll add something to that. So much in art is a building up of additional colors. And uh, starting off with the basics, the basic message, and then adding to it. So one thing I often hear when I teach is I can't draw. I'm not asking you to draw. I don't care if you can draw or not. We're going to use basic design principles that have been around since the caveman. We're going to use dots and lines. You want to try to keep them equally distant? If you don't, no one's going to slap you down. It's just uh, the way that that design goes. So I'm a firm believer in that there is nothing wrong in art. It is a personal expression. You learn some basic design principles, whether you're lettering or you're drawing, and those principles come through however you interpret them, whether it was intentional or it was a fluke. You're going to enjoy what happens. All right, let's let this dry. All right, so with that all being said, and that lecture of philosophy, we're now going to take our place and add a couple of design principles to it. Or you know what I can do? We can actually letter first. We'll letter on the dark side there. actually going to be true here now with the brush. So something dark, something light to letter. I think I'm going to go with a, uh, an off-white. I don't want to really go with the true white uh, because it would pop. Can you all see where you're at? Yeah, no pop. <coughs> Let's see what we voted on. The earth laughs and flowers got two. Well, we are got three. Weeders, welcome. All right, so the most popular one was the earth laughs, oh, wait a minute, bloom where you are. That's one thing that we're hearing that way. All right, so we are here. Let's do the earth laughs and flowers. That will give us the ability here to, now here's a prime example. This has been sitting on the deck for a while. Um, the wood is, the blue and black there. I obviously rubbed up against that or a chicken did something to it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I saw that this morning. It's like, you know, I'm taking that with me anyways because we're going to put something over that. I'm not going to go back up and, and fix that. We're just going to go right over it. It's going to become part of the design. So, the earth 
laughs and flowers. I'm thinking of doing something bright. We'll be able to put bright flowers behind it. This will end up being a pretty nice piece. Crack different size brushes. Of course, the size of the brush is going to determine, this looks like that was probably done in this brush. Or maybe even a fatter one. No, I think it was done in this brush and I just double stroked it. So this is going to give you a pretty heavy font. We've got here a pretty good uh, length of, of words. So this one is going to have a smaller brush. Plus I want control. Um, I'm going to think of doing it in an italic, if you see the italic there. And we're going to have it as level as possible. Been doing this sideways. Um, and I'm thinking the earth laughs in flowers. You can do it in two lines. Or we could do a really uh, thin italic and get it to fit by doing it right through the middle there. The earth laughs in flowers. I think that's what I'm going to do. You just went through the thinking process. My intention now is to run the letter right through the middle, pretty small, and then we'll be able to decorate the flowers around it. So let's make the color. Uh, water for acrylics. Some of these are really grayed out, so you don't have to mix them any longer. You know, they're not like primary colors. You can use them right out of the container, which is kind of nice. I've been doing it for so long so that I don't have somebody to. somebody like me. <laughs> That's a great question. All right, so let me let me back up and do that for you. Thank you for keeping me on track. All right, this is going to be the area here that I want the letters to be. So uh, with a pencil, I'm going to uh, give myself an idea of how far each word has to go before I run out of space. All right, so uh, I want to give myself a, a border on each side. Things don't go. Think in mind what's your message. Meme and Marcus are Dollar General. Both serve their value. But I want to give myself more on the Meme and Marcus side than Dollar General. So uh, take a pencil or a pen. You know the idea of what you want to do. We're going to do it in my talent, so I'm thinking. Looked at. In flowers is going to take up about here. 
the earth last has to be finished by here. So now we take the, there are no mistakes, there's always paper towels and water. Won't be the first time. So you mix, mix, mix this up. Do you always mix the acrylic and water? Yeah. Sometimes the, the, uh, this is a heavy consistency. Uh, if you were using like a latex paint out of a can, like a quart can or a gallon can, yeah. from, it would probably have a consistency that you would not have to mix with water. So you just thin it down as to the size of the letters or, I mean... Um, wh why am I mixing it with water? Yeah, I mean... Uh, it, just, it makes it more fluid to okay. flow off of the brush. So if I was stippling, uh, or I, I would probably keep it the consistency that came out of those containers, but I'm not. I want it to be a fluid brush. The italic is a very graceful alphabet. It was designed in Italy as a re direct result of the black letter, which was part of what uh, Gutenberg uh, used when he created the printing press. And uh, the people of, of Italy found that letter form to be barbaric. So they went the exact opposite way. And uh, they created a very graceful font which integrates our handwriting very easily. It is something that is done um, as, as far as uh, the gracefulness of our handwriting is built based upon the italic alphabet. Then with a broad pen, uh, which is a calligraphy pen, or uh, could be done with a reed. It's not done with a, a quill point. Those ones, uh, which became steel pens, those ones did a a form of lettering that was very popular in the courts of Europe in the 1700s. And it was very, and that's where our writing today with the ballpoint pen comes from. But this is the basis of that. The earth laughs. Now you can keep it all italic or you can change it. Do I want to change it? No, I think I'm going to get it all italic. Now remember that I'm supposed to be done with last here. Hmm. Hmm. It's going to be close. There are uh, little marks that help you, especially with the pen, to get the uh, pen started that go in the front of the letter form. It's called a serif. We don't need them necessarily here with the paint, but if you start it, you do want to um, keep them. So I have serifs and swashes on this. The swashes are the graceful tops to these. The serifs are those little tiny lines. Of this 
is based upon the thin and the thick. Um, that is how it becomes easy to read, pleasant to the eye. My, my whole arm moved during that. I didn't have wrist fiber. Okay, so this is where it stands right now. It's a little bit straighter than mine, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll go back with other acrylics and we'll put in, I'm thinking pink. Pinks and yellows would be fun. You know, daisies. And they don't even have to really look like daisies. Once again, you don't have to be able to draw. What is, does it come up with? It just comes up with the stroke and dots. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep this simple. We don't have to be Rembrandt. Rembrandt didn't do it. We're going to be more like Monet. Pointillism in color. All right, so get this out of here. So <laughs> You have to, the thing that will make you not afraid to do it is there are no mistakes. You said paper and water to wipe it off of you. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just, I'm, I'm not going to touch it because no. I'm happy with that, <laughs> but water and, and paper towels, well, I, I would probably use cloth because paper towels would leave all that lint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we're going under the faucet if you have to. <laughs> yeah, you just start again tomorrow. Let the water, the thing will wood dry and off you go again tomorrow. So now we're going to go back and put a little more uh, color on a couple of these. Let this dry. Actually, I'm probably not going to let dry. You can put the flowers around it. This is the base here, so um, it's just very simple little lines. Different thicknesses of the lines, so sometimes I'm using the brush on the side, sometimes I'm using the, uh, the brush on the edge. On this particular one, I'm uh, I'm putting, I'm putting in the dots of the flowers. Let me do it this way. Just knock it in, and then go back in between those, and then has to, by its mere presence, go out of row. Now, uh, let's make that into a flower. We're going to put another color on here. The other color will give more character to these flowers. We can at least put one more color. Fifty cents a piece at Walmart right now. Paint? Really? These little bottles on? 
You should not have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to no, run quickly right before she goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is tax free weekend too. Oh, that's right. I'm sure this is cool. I wonder if that's that 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 probably not included. Our supplies count. Huh? I think our supplies count. Ooh, oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a lot of colors, but they had some. Okay, hey, you know, and you can always make more colors with the ones that you get. That's right. Yes. I will definitely have to put that on the list of places to go this weekend. All right, this needs green. Uh, I'm going to show oh, no, I'm not going to It's coming together. Don't tell me I, I can't paint flowers. I can't. I made dots. Don't they look like flowers? Yeah. All right, now we're going to add vines. I'm going to um, keep the same brush just because I don't want you to think, oh, you have to have this type of brush and that type of brush. No, um, but I probably would have used a, a thin, a thinner brush than this or this to, to make leaves, but we're going to do it in the same brush. Brushes can be very expensive. Um, I, tr I try not to spend more than a couple of bucks on a brush. I know my things are not going to be hung at the MFA. So I'm not going to spend $10 or $20 on a stable brush to do this. So I'm telling you this just because this can be a very practical hobby. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. I want a spring green. I don't have a spring green. I'm going to make a spring green. So we have here with their Christmas green and uh, banana yellow. Interesting. We'll see how this looks together. Did you deliberately put an odd number of flowers or is No, there's nothing deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the flower. Yeah. <laughs> this is whatever you want. Huh? Yeah. No. The only thing deliberate today is that you, you feel like you're you're learning something and you want to do this when you've been here. That's the only deliberate thing. Nothing else is deliberate at all. This is very bright. This is going to have to be grayed down. All right. Now, this is where you have to assess uh, the tone <coughs> of the color. That's a, a word we haven't spoke of at all. But let me show you these colors. They're, they're very bright. That banana yellow is whoo. Um, so I probably should have gone with an ochre, but I did not. So we're going to take a little bit of the paint and tone this baby down. You can see on the opposite side of the color wheel here. You see how adding that just makes it a more relaxed green. Um, that relaxed green will fit in better than the little green, the bright green that we just had. So we're going to keep this more of a relaxed green so that the green doesn't jump out at you. Now if we were doing something for a carnival or a kid's room or um, something that had the vibrancy, you could keep that banana yellow green um, because it would work. It, it would work for the vibrancy. But this is a uh, this is going to be more relaxing. It has more muted tones. All right, so we're going to make this part of the design of the the whole piece it has to kind of complement the piece. So you want it to, I'm creating a bond is what I'm doing to go between. Then we'll go back and we'll add some little swirlies to make it more, look more vinish. And we'll add on some, some leaves. This is not coming down this way, but it is now. All right, this is where it's at. This is not finished. This is where it's at. That's great. Yeah. It's not finished. Thank you. But we're going to go back and we're going to add just a little bit more here. I like, uh, and this is only me, but I like leaves that are kind of triangular. I just think they're kind of cool. 
So we're going to add a couple of very triangular types of these.
So when the sun is coming from your shadow, it's going to be consistently on the same side. Okay. So do you want to come in from this way? Do you want to come in from this way? Today I'm going to have to come this way. And we may not like this. This may end up being grayed out. And let's go back to the ground board on this baby. But we don't know until we try. I'm actually not keeping it in any all. I'm making it more of the evergreen. All right, so right in through here, I want that green to go. Now, the beautiful thing is about giving the shadow that if you didn't like the stroke, the shape the stroke made before, you now have an opportunity to change that. Uh, I'm going to do the capitals first and then see if I want to continue further with the other letters. doing today is I, I just, um, I didn't realize it, but um, these colors are kind of earthy colors, greens and blues. But as I'm putting them here, they're kind of earthy. Let me put this in here right now. I see the hair. It's the brush falling apart. That's what happens when you buy a $2 brush. <laughs> <laughs> Those twenty dollar brushes don't fall apart like that. All right, and then over here. All right, now I want to go back and, and just point out that basic design elements like dots and lines. Here's your line. Your line is a shadow here on these. Then we're going to go back and we're going to dot everything. Uh, let me finish this. Alright, so that's acceptable. 
calls me right now. Just okay. those. Now I'm going to take that off white and go back and we're going to dot every letter. You're going to see this thing change immensely. These are classic design elements. Uh,